multiple billionaire investors are loading up on gold, including hedge fund founder Ray Dalio and real estate mogul Sam Zell, meaning now is the time to own gold. One precious metals expert is stepping forward with a big prediction. He believes we could see gold reach as high as $3,000 by the end of the year, possibly higher. So find out why and get instant access to his number one gold investment for 2022. It's not bullion, an ETF, or a mining stock. In the past, folks using the same gold strategy could have been able to make nearly 50 times their initial investment. Considering how quickly the price of gold has been moving, you don't want to waste any time missing out on the gains he believes are in store for this investment. So to get a copy of his new free report with all the details, simply go to 2022goldmania.com. Again, that's 2022goldmania.com for a free copy of his new report. Claude Biget, keynote speaker here at the Swiss Mighty Institute Conference in Zurich. Always good to be with you. Nice to see you again. Great to see you. Uh, yes. We haven't, uh, we haven't talked since, uh, I think, uh, April 2019 or something Absolutely. Like that. It's been too long, but what a conference. Uh, you know, I was telling the other speakers, Stati Gruboli, uh, lots of enthusiasm for the space. You've been covering the mining space for so long. I mean, wh where are we at now in, in the cycle, would you say? Well, I can tell you, outside of this conference where there's been a lot of people, yes. um, all conferences in Europe were Quiet. more or less empty, yes. uh, even the best. Uh, they could not attract even the fund managers yes. because uh, they have no more cash, everything is going down. Right. You've had an 18-month correction. <sighs> I'm, uh, I'm getting this. Even I am getting this. Right, right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but um, if you look at what's happening with the Swiss bank, they're always a good con contrary indicator, as you know, um, they, um, they, they used to, usually they have 10% in, in gold, right? Now, since 2013, they're at 0%. And recently they started to nibble a little. So you have, you know, they have 1%, 2% and they have absolutely no gold mines. So the sentiment is you know, really, but really if we low. look at the gold price, right, it's still wanting the gold as an asset is on track to be one of the best performing assets of 2022. People, we don't speak about right. it, but it's one of the best performing assets. So why isn't this being reflected in the mining space yet? Right. That's that's very true. Um, it's very strange. Um, well, I think it's psychological. You know, when you when you own an, an, an asset class, uh, whatever happens, you want it to be, you know, more in your direction. So it's like, you know, it's like if you own a stock, it goes up, you say, oh, why didn't I buy more? Yeah. And if it goes down, you say, ah, I should have bought, bought less. So it's this psych psychology, okay? And also, I think that all of a sudden, what we've been dreaming of, which is for the, for the goal, right? Not for the world, but for the, the space. Um, we've been dreaming about inflation. And then we get inflation right. and we get war. So most gold bugs are disappointed. They, you know, if you told me you're going to have war in, you, in Europe, I mean, I'm from Europe. I've lived in Paris all my life. Yeah. I never thought I would see war in Europe. That's right. That's a big thing. So, so you would have told me, you know, when we spoke in... Uh, um, not you know two three years ago you would tell me you know eight infla yeah, percent inflation eight percent inflation right. in the U.S. plus war in Ukraine I would have said you know gold two thousand five hundred so it's a disappointment but you're totally right if you if you if you look back when we spoke in uh, three years ago uh, gold was at twelve fifty and we were all dreaming yeah, oh. That's right. Could we break the magic number at the time yeah. was 1350? Right. Can we break above and then we're going to the races? And we're now at 1850. You're totally right. It's a good price. I'm yeah, very I mean, happy. Just with compared, that. there's so much focus on the SP, right? And if you look at gold versus the SP, gold has absolutely right. lapped the right. SP. It has so. Um, definitely on track to be one of the best performing assets. But while she doesn't talk about gold, does it talk about right. uh, OD gold? Yeah, it's true that uh, I think people will have to realize that we are now in a bear market. The world is different. It's game over for stocks. That's it. Game over. Do you do we go? Have we hit a bottom in stocks or do you think there's more? Um, we probably have 
have uh, hit a bottom short term because it's very undervalued. But this is a bear market. A bear market starts with a bang. We've had a bang. A bear market starts after a period of euphoria. We've had the exponential. You had Bitcoin going from $200 to $69,000. You had Luna go, well, so that's, that's, I mean, that's a hell the of a bull market. The checklist is here. The so, checklist so, is here. Yeah, and, and you had overvaluation of everything. Right. Overvaluation of bonds, right. overvaluation of real estate. Yeah. Now, the bubble has popped. Now, when a bubble, that's bubble theory. When bubble pops, they pop and they go back down to the, to the beginning of the, of the exponential. So we have a long way to go down. A long way. Long way. Yeah. And then that's, so that of course has hurt the mining stocks, okay, because there's been a trauma for gold investors. Uh, it's the 2008 trauma. In 2000, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, if somebody in his childhood had something terrible happen, it's right. going to create a trauma. which PTSD. Will, right. And that can last for, you know, your whole life. It's the same thing in markets. In 2008, the gold bugs thought they would be protected from a, from a market event by having some gold stocks. They went down just like the market. Same thing in 2020. So second trauma. In 2020, when this COVID thing hit, the, the, the gold stocks were down 44% in a couple of weeks just because the stock market went down. So, so basically, gold has been holding up pretty well and gold bugs have been selling gold stocks because they, if you're a gold bug, you know you're in a bubble in other assets. But Claude, is there ever a decoupling from the stock market at mining stocks. I'm waiting for that event. <laughs> yes. So it could be now uh, because normally uh, it could be now because we might have a, a rally in the stock market. And even if it goes lower, it will go lower later. There is a deep coupling. So if you take an example, big market decline, 72, 73, uh, the, uh, the S&P was down something like 50% in nominal terms. But in real terms, adjusted for inflation, it was down 75%. And during that time, gold stocks skyrocketed. So yes, there should be a decoupling. Because one of these days, I mean, nobody, you know, if you're in the money management business, you still believe that you're in a bull market. So buy the dip. So they see their uh, Apple going down, they see Amazon going down, and they say, oh, okay, I'm going to buy it cheaper. It's great. They're going to buy. It's going to make, it make them feel good. Amazon is going to go up and then poof, it will go back down. And these money managers, they don't have the culture of gold stocks. They don't have the analysts exactly. to analy and analyze well, them. The media are not talking about gold. Now, if you were a real investor, and now there's much less real investors in the world because they're all momentum players. So... But a real investor would say, well, what do I do? Should I invest in something that is creating a huge margin with a nice dividend, like a nice gold stock? Or should I buy a, a tech stock with no earnings that has never had earnings in their existence? So one day people will be tired of losing money in the, in the general equity market or in overvalued real estate or anything. And then you should have this thick decoupling. I don't know when, that's a problem. <laughs> Let me ask you, um, I'm curious to get your thoughts on the cryptocurrencies. Are you invested in cryptos? Well, I, I, I did dabble a little because, uh, um, you know, it's crypto and, and, and gold is sort of on the same yes. type of idea. So I have nothing against crypto, but don't ask me about crypto because I'm certainly not a specialist. Um, but you have made history with this unbelievable debate uh, with Frank Justra, and I think that will, you know, people will be talking about this debate in a uh, hundred years. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But but just getting back, I guess, to, to the mining space, um, you obviously believe that there's great opportunity now, right? If we yeah. are... One thing I would yeah. say on Bitcoin, yes. and I think that was what Justra brought to your debate, is that nobody should 
you should never believe anybody who tells you to leverage, <laughs> okay? especially on speculative. So I'm very bullish on gold stocks. Don't leverage, never, because you never know. I can be wrong, everybody can be wrong. Uh, so in, in the case of Bitcoin, I'm certainly not going to tell you it's going to go up and down or down. I believe it's going to go down because for me it's a risk asset. So it's going to go down with the stock market, with right. the bond market and everything. But what's important is that people who, who still believe in the Bitcoin story, they should limit, their, they should think of what is going to happen. If, the, if Bitcoin goes down 50%, what do they do? They add, if they do add, how much? If it goes down another 50%. So they calculate the maximum risk they can, they're willing to take and not go over that. So that if they're wrong, they don't get hurt. And if they're right, they make money and everybody's happy. I'd love to get some stock picks from you now. Did you bring some? Okay, well, yeah. uh, yes, uh, you know, it's, it's buying time because yes. um, gold stocks have been, you know, collapsing. Um, maybe, um, maybe one first thing is that, you know, buying individual stock is always, you know, um, um, difficult. Um, there, is, um, there is one gold fund that I could recommend because for people who don't want to take the time to study individual stocks, uh, there's the, the gold from, from Crescat. Oh, yes. And they were created, the fund was launched in 2020. They got the best track record in the world. I think they're up something like 153% while the, the gold stocks were down, uh, I think something like 30%. And they are after the most uh, rewarding strategy possible. They're only investing in what can go up the most, which is exploration. So, uh, give me, uh, and how about two specific mining stocks? Um, okay, well, if you want high return, no risk, West Vault Mining, symbol WVM. Okay. It's the perfect stock, the perfect location there in Nevada. So there's no better jurisdiction right now. They have $6 million in cash. They have a property with a very solid project. Uh, they can go in, they, they have a PFS, very solid with good metallurgy, everything. And uh, you're paying that $60 million. The capital to put the mine into production is $53 million, so it's very small. And they have the best shareholder list in the world with Peter Palmetto, 47%. Um, Ruffer, 17%, uh, Gold 2000, Erich Meyer, 5%, Eric Sprott, 5%. And the chairman does not, uh, could have put the, the project in production at $1,400 gold, it would have made money. But he but wants 2600 He wants 2600 to start going into production. At these prices, the net present value is $650 million. So from here, it's a 10-bagger. So let's say you have 50% of that. It goes up five, five times. There's no downside risk because it's trading at 0 0.2 times NAV and the but, company will be buying its own shares under a okay, dollar. We have time for one more. Give me one more name. Okay, well, another uh, very low risk would be Alexco. Uh, it's run by uh, Clint Nauman. He's an old timer. He stopped the, 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 the production because the price of silver went down. He didn't want to lose shareholder money. Now he's putting the mine back into production. There's a little supply chain problem, so there's a little delays. So uh, the stock got hammered. Market cap, $170 million. But they will be pr producing 4 million ounces. That's going to cash flow $40 million, 10 times cash flow, $400 million. You has an easy double and triple. It's a $1 stock. It used to trade at $5. There you go. Appreciate that. Our viewers will appreciate that as well. Claude, um, have a wonderful conference. It was so nice seeing you and best of luck. Okay, well, we'll see what happens with these gold mines. Let's I, see. I hope this decoupling starts soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Claude. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.